Cinco de Mayo time, we're putting the Southwest into our barbecue this week with our secret ingredient. Stick around for that, plus a gadget that both Jack and I are wishing that we had thought of. It is a million peso idea, Bill. <laughs> Fire it up. Great TV time, it's uh, Jack Wayboard, three-time South Carolina State Champion and founder of CarolinaPitmasters.com. Uh, we'll see him there and Without a doubt. learn how to cook. And uh, <laughs> I'm Bill West with BarbecueTricks.com. And uh, we're coming to you live from the birthplace of South, uh, birthplace of American American barbecue. barbecue right here, Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. And it is another banner day for barbecue here in South Carolina. I don't, can they? Can we see the net, the sand gnats that we have here? Yeah, you know, when you live in a coastal area, the gnats, uh, we call them gnats. I don't know, people call them no see or whatever. They uh, they can get a little uh, irritating, Bill. They're annoying. Not bad. I got my, annoying. my, I got my spray on. So skin I'm so soft. Yeah. We're doing good. Um, thank you for checking us out. The beer Crackle. today, we're, uh, it looks like we're uh, dipping into the beers of yesterday because, or yesterday's shows because we are finishing up the Guinness draft that uh, Tony brought a couple of shows ago. So uh, very malty, very tasty, and uh, thank you, Tony, for the beer. Uh, the show that takes about a beer to drink, so uh, crack one open and join us. Letter one uh, comes to us from Sean. He writes, I have a friend that makes jalapeno jelly like y'all talked about a few shows ago. Indeed. I'm gonna experiment with that for my glaze, he writes. Should I mix my barbecue sauce with it? or add spices to the jelly. He's gonna try experimenting with both. What, what would you suggest? Well, it's, it's all a matter of where you want the jalapeno flavor to come from. Um, I like to take the jellies, I get them a little heated up. That way they get a little more fluid, a little more viscous. I use a paintbrush and depending on where I want the glaze to be as far as the taste goes, uh, when you're eating, um, I would try first just put a layer on the on the right on top of the meat when you when you get done when your ribs come out of the foil if you're foiling uh, maybe three or four hours into the cook towards the end because the jelly will have a lot of sugar in it so you don't want it to burn maybe put a glaze of the jalapeno jelly right straight on top of the ribs and then go ahead and glaze over top of the, with with the sauce that'll temper the heat down a little bit because you're using sweet on top of the heat and that'll you know sweet heat for the meat. We all know that little That's comment, right? right? Yeah. So if you go ahead and put that, that glaze right on top, that, that sweet glaze right on top of the, of, the, of the jalapeno and jelly, it'll tone that heat down a little bit. Conversely, if you want that heat to be in the front, if you put the glaze down first and you put the jelly down on top of it, then you'll get the heat on the front end. So it's all a matter of how you want to play with your, with your flavor profile and how you want that whole thing to go. If you want it, if you want to put it in your sauce, it will temper in the sauce, but it'll, it all changes where you mix it. So what you're saying is, when you talk about glazing it, if you put it on after the sauce, it'll get kind of an after. If you put it on, if you put the sauce heat? down first, and then you put the glaze on top of it, you'll get the heat when you on the front. Just like you'd think. Just like you think. The think. top layer. Right. If you put the if you put the jalapeno glaze down on top of the ribs, and then put the sauce down on top of that, it'll temper it, and your tongue will taste the, the sweet sauce first, and then it'll taste the heat. Okay. It'll actually be, you can think of it like it'll actually be mixed up That's right. in your mouth already. It's just, a little, it's just a little different way. And like I said, if you want to put it right in with your, with your sauce, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Once again, barbecue is the way you like it. And that's what's important. When it comes to sauces, uh, let's just say for competition, what do, you, what do you usually do for pork sauce? Do you do a sauce for chicken? Uh, we all of our sauces in competition are all different, Bill. We have a chicken sauce that has, you, as you would expect, a kind of a chicken kind of reflection. Citrus goes in good with that. Uh, we might use some chicken stock uh, to make sure we bring in chicken in with with the whole mix, and we'll bring in the the, the spices that are common to chicken, i.e., um, maybe uh, a little bit of oregano, um, maybe some uh, like I said, some citrus, some lemon zest, uh, things that go along with that. Tarragon is good for chicken. We've talked about that in the past. So it's all a matter of you know what you like and how you want to make it all work. And then. Uh We've talked about pork before. Yeah, pork, pork is you're like for competition. You you kind of shoot for what's 
familiar to most judges, right? That, that's true, but uh, you know, we like to make our pork sauce very light because we want the flavor of the pork to come through. Um, and you wanna, for that, we use a very, we use a, a, a well-seasoned, well-made, kind of a thinner vinegar kind of sauce. Uh, and you can use the sugar to sweeten it up or not sweeten it up, depending on how much tang you want to bring, and so on and so forth. Uh, but we like, in, especially in, in the contest, we like the, the pork to shine through and be complemented by the sauce, and we find that a vinegar sauce does best for that. That doesn't mean we won't use a little bit of a thicker sauce to glaze the bark while we're, before we put it in the box. So you get all the, you get all the goods that go on with it. What, we don't, what I don't like to do is put a real thick sauce in with all of the barbecue, because then all you get is this real thick, sweet, kind of taste that barbecue. I really don't like barbecue like that, and I don't think judges do either. A real thick syrupy. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. A little talk on sauce. We'll get delving more into that uh, a little bit later on. Yeah, we should. Uh, our great plate today comes from my friend Michael Boltman in Augusta, Georgia. All right, Michael. He actually was just inspired to take a picture and send it to me. Uh, so I said, yeah, let's use this for a great plate. It's you're, awesome. you're also encouraged to send us a great plate. Bring them on. He's got some shrimp and chicken fajitas on a grill pan on the grill there. So you they see look the shrimp. Awesome, look at that. Green peppers. All mixed together. Looks really good. Man, Great way. Tasty. Get a little smoke on the uh, on the fajitas. I'll tell you what, yeah, you go ahead and throw that on a on a tortilla with a little bit of salsa and some guacamole and some sour cream. I bet that would yeah, be I'll just right. grab it with my fist. That looks so good. <laughs> Thanks for the great plate. Send them our way. GreatTV.com. Awesome. And uh, it's real simple just to like upload it, it up. Our gadget this week, it uh, was my birthday about a week or so ago, and I got a bunch of different things, but one of them was this. It's called Firewire Flexible Grilling Skewer, and what, I like the idea. What a great idea that is, Bill, and I'll tell you, this is one of those things that when you look at it, you kind of pop yourself in the head and say, man, why didn't I think of that? Because basically that's stainless, braided stainless wire, and they put a little toothpick kind of spear on the end of it like a kind of like a probe uh, kind of look action right there and all you do is run your um, meats and vegetables on down the wire and you can do whatever pretty much whatever you want Bill because it's all flexible you can run them around a circle or run them in an S pattern or pretty much however you want to do it and I'll tell you what that is a fantastic idea easy to clean so I would imagine reusable what a, what a great product I, I you know I'm I'm just a clever idea, and it's just stain. Looks like a stainless steel cable is literally like it could have been used for something else. I'm gonna rip it open, but I'm actually fairly jealous that MJ thought about you and bought that for you for your birthday, Bill. It's a great thing. I'll let you borrow it. Actually, you know, and how it's like something that's not gonna wear out. No, man, you know? that's stainless steel wire right there. Brainless stainless steel wire. That's very nice. So you I can, and you can get a lot on here yeah. because how many times have you had the problem of? Well, on certain grills, you could not have enough room, but this yeah, way you, you can curve it around. Curve it around and lay them on there. What a great idea that is. I should have. I wish I'd have thought of that myself. I'd probably be a million peso man right now. We'll get a link to it uh, at greattv.com. Awesome. A really clever idea. Very clever. The fire wire cable. Very nice. And uh, I'm sure after you heat it up, you have to be real careful with that. Sure. Grab it, grab it with hot. a pair of gloves. But uh, it looks pretty durable, too. I say. How about our uh, secret ingredient this week? Since we're talking uh, Cinco de Mayo time. I brought with me today, Bill, some stuff called a chote paste. And a chote paste is annatto, is spiced annatto paste. Annatto pepper is a ancho pepper, uh, another name for an ancho pepper. Uh, this has obviously been uh, dried and ground and made into a paste. It has a lot of other flavors in it. But I like to use this, this product right here with a, in a brine, uh, especially the chicken brine. Uh, because it just brings all those Southwest flavors right to it. It's got cumin in it, uh, paprika. It's got everything you need in it to really, really, really bring a fine flavor. If you're looking for a Southwest flavor to your chicken, um, great to use with uh, as as in addition to. Um, we had a, a, a product here uh, that had sour orange juice in it, uh, some ginger ale, um, and, and a lot of as far as the marinades and and all that good stuff goes with chicken to be able to soak chicken in. Uh, I like to add a little achote paste. I tell you, if you really want to try something special, put a little achote paste in some buttermilk and let your chicken sit in that for a little while. Really? And it really does bring Is it, it to why me. am I thinking it's going to have a chipotle taste? But it, it, chipotle's jalapeno, this is a, this is a, a ancho pepper. So it's a little little earthier tasting. But a it's little not bit. necessarily smoked. There, and there's, no, but there's no, th th this won't bring heat. And uh, Chipotle usually brings heat, and uh, that just brings that earthy Southwest flavor. I tell you what, I really enjoy. Um, I have a, 
I have a stack of uh, ancho paste sitting in my counter right, or in my cupboard right now. <clears throat> so it comes from the an anato seed? An anato seed, and an anato seed is from the ancho pepper. Wow. So this is like a powdery paste it, that you paste. just kind of... Yeah, I, you hack a block off and it's it's actually got a, it's a paste. Much of a shelf life on this? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I you use, it, use I all use, of it. I use, I use about half a block at a time. And the place to get this is like a Mexican grocery? I actually bought that at my local uh, big block, big box, big box retailer. Uh, I picked it up, <laughs> I'd say that four times. I, I bought that at Walmart. Okay. Uh, it's sitting on the, it's in the uh, Latino section ready to go. Cool. El Guapo is El the Guapo. brand, but uh, yeah, they make a bunch of different kinds. I of, would say Echote. 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 Cool. Cool. Um, that's it for our secret ingredient this week. Happy Cinco de Mayo. And uh, got a website we'll be, this week, Bill. You know, anything you want? Anybody you want to give a shout out to? You know, uh, I think we should uh, talk to my buddy Daryl Mess at Barbecue Superstars this week. Daryl Mass, Barbecue Superstars. There you go. Does we'll he have any of your stuff up? We'll shout him out. Uh, he went to uh, Las Vegas for some reason recently and uh, has a bunch of new stuff up there on his trip to Vegas. I saw that. I wonder if he's, because there's a lot of country, I'm a country music guy, and there's a lot of country music going on that weekend. I know he's in Vegas. I wonder if he is involved with country music yeah, somehow. He could be somehow. What do I know? I know he's a dentist by trade, but... Uh, Daryl, uh, we appreciate what you do. We appreciate you uh, supporting everything that we do here at Great TV, and of course, uh, one thing one thing he does, he links over to us. Yes, which we would encourage you to do. Absolutely, links, drop a link to us or embed our our videos. We love that, and uh, thumb up our videos on YouTube. Subscribe to the channels, and on iTunes. The cool thing is, you know, hopefully you would give it a great star rating and a comment, but uh, subscribe right. as well. And remember, uh, Facebook, we need to uh, see you on that. And I am tweeting these days uh, at SC Pitmaster. Certainly, we want to get to that. And I think on the next show, we will announce the big, huge, oh, great prize. TV prize package uh, that we're putting together for the 1,000th either Twitter follower or Facebook follower that comes my way comes Bill's way, comes the way of the show. We're within striking distance on, on Facebook. Yeah, so we need, a, we we need about we need a couple hundred more, so uh, get out there with all your friends, uh, tell them they need to like the show, and we will send out the big prize package to the 1,000th sliker. <laughs> Man, I got it going on <laughs> today, that don't that I? I got to go. The gnats are getting me here, the, the bugs. So uh, tell you what, gang, we'll uh, see you next week. Just for, uh, just for uh, general purposes, uh, think global, buy local. Uh, every chance you get, uh, be sustainable, and for goodness sakes, hug your mama. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Happy Cinco de Mayo.